This is a figure showing all the viruses you need to know for step one. In this lecture, we will be discussing Hepatinoviridae, or Hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is one of the highest yield viruses for step one. There are a lot of things to know about it, and examiners like to go after intense conceptual material. With that in mind, I will teach you Hepatitis B conceptually, then I will help you memorize and lock it all in. If you patiently take in all of the info in this video, you will thank yourself later as you dominate your board exams. So let's get started. This diagram shows the basic structure of hepatitis B. Starting from the outside, we see the surface. This is the location of these surface antigens. These are termed the hepatitis B surface antigens. Going deeper now, we see these proteins which represent the E antigen. These are termed the hepatitis B E antigens. Even deeper, we can see the capsid. This has an icosahedral shape to it. The capsid is considered the core, so the antigens here are considered core antigens, or rather, hepatitis B, C antigens. Within the capsid, we have the genome, or DNA, which you can see has this circular and partially double-stranded appearance. So there's two strands here, DS for double-stranded, and then right here, it's single-stranded, hence partially double-stranded. And then here's also the DNA polymerase. Now this diagram shows the level of serologic markers over time. This is specifically referring to someone who clears and recovers from the infection. So they have an acute infection and then they recover. So this diagram does not depict patients that experience chronic infection. And you may find this diagram in several of your review books, but just know that this diagram is not referring to chronic patients. Now notice that between the acute phase and the recovery phase, there's a window phase. So those are the three stages. Going back to the acute phase, Notice that there is DNA detectable, and then starting from time zero, the first thing we see is this red line, which is the surface antigen. Then we have the E antigen, and then antibodies against the core. And again, these are IgM. After about five to six months, this region right here, the surface antigen and the E antigen are no longer detectable. At this point, we've started what's called that window period, and that lasts about a month. Antibodies against the E antigen can be present at this point, but they are often undetectable. So you can see the E antigen right here and the line depicting its level, but it may not be high enough to be detectable. So the marker that's reliably detected during the window phase are these IgM antibodies. You can see the line right here. Near the end of the window phase, we will see two things occur. First, there's seroconversion, and we will see IgG antibodies present. And these, of course, are against the core antigen. Second, antibodies against the surface will develop depicted by this red line. And these are the antibodies you really want because they indicate immunity, as we discussed on the table before. 